what motivates you? I don't mean what gets you excited and ready to the weekend and what are you looking forward to, but what what is driving you? Every one of us is driven by something. And in our Proverbs today, as we continue in our devotions in the book of Proverbs, we're going to see why it is that understanding motives, understanding purposes is so important. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray, please, as we grapple with what you say about not just our actions, but our purposes, that you would mold our purposes to yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're in Proverbs chapter 20. We've been working through that for a few days now. And we're at verse 5. The, pur- the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. That's an interesting little one, isn't it? It's one of those you have to ponder a bit, which is kind of what it's asking us to do. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draw them out. That is, the first part of it is talking about the fact that none of us do things without a reason for it. Even if it's just lazing around, there's often something deep inside us. And how you, you might look at people and what they're doing, think, why are they like that? Why are they doing that? Well, you might even ask that of yourself. Why are they like that? Actually, the purposes might be deep down inside. Uh, interesting, the movie Inception, uh, fascinating movie, great and well-made movie as well, with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, talking about how can you change someone's deep purposes within, and he works out a technique which is, you know, science fiction of going into someone's dream to plant a seed, a thought. But the idea of it is that every one of us has this deep motivation, this seed deep within that none of us can understand, uh, and that so far we don't even necessarily understand it ourselves. It's driving everything that we do. But he says here that is deep waters and so that may be buried down and may be you know, so meaningful even if we haven't thought about it much. But one who has insight draws them out. Now, who is it talking about? Is it talking about yourself or is it talking about understanding other people's motivations? I think it's talking about both. The, these, the person who's got wisdom, God's wisdom, will look at themselves and others and and say, what is it that's going on here? Why are they like that? Why are they doing those things? Why are they making the choice? Even if those choices are positive and things, you could have multiple motivations for the same action, couldn't you? Yeah, I think I've used this illustration before. Of uh, So there's a pretty girl, comes out of the library, she's got a whole stack of books, walks down the stairs and trips over and drops all the books and all these different guys come running over to help her, right? Which is great, isn't it? But one of them is uh, genuinely interested in her feelings and there's this poor person in need and I'm just here to help. The second person has been looking for an excuse to get her name and number and it'll look good in her eyes because he wants to ask her out. The third guy comes over because he knows that she's really good at maths homework and she's, he's thinking, man, I'll get a favor out of this if I do a favor for her. And so you have all these people, their action looks the same and the girl's health, which is great, but it's, um, uh, it's different motivations that are driving it. And what this proverb is saying is that you've got to search deep within of yourself to understand what you're doing, but also search what other people are doing to understand. Because actually the goodness, the rightness of the person's decisions, their actions, their choices, but their whole life is not just on the level of the outward appearance, but what comes from the heart. So for instance, uh, Jesus will talk about different things in the Sermon on the Mount. So actually, it's a hard issue. You can be doing the right thing and not committing adultery and not murdering people and so on, but still be filled with hate and lust and so on in your heart. And so what's deep within actually might be terribly sinful, even if the outward actions are you know, above board. He, the crit- Pharisee, he criticizes the Pharisees over and over again for being whitewashed tombs. So I think it's great looking outward appearance, but inside they're dead at heart. They're not there to please God and serve God. Right, and so their actions uh, may be noble looking, but they're sinful at heart. In fact, Paul will go a step further in Romans chapter 15 to say that everything that does not proceed from faith 
is sin. That is, if our motivation is not trusting the Lord Jesus and wanting to please God, loving God with all our heart, then it's sin. And that, that's an indictment on us, isn't it? Which is why Isaiah will say that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who cleanses not just our us from our sin and takes the consequences, but starts to change us within, change our hearts so that it might be like his heart. Right, that gives us a love because we have first been loved that changes our motivations. And so don't just take things on face value. I guess Jesus warns that, the Bible warns that, this proverb is warning that. Don't take things on face value with yourself. Go deep, look hard within and say, why am I doing this? What, and do some ruthless self-examination. But also the warning here is, well, it's not a warning, is it? True wisdom is found in searching through motives. You want to understand other people, why they do what they do. It's deep waters within it often, and to get to the heart of it is true wisdom. So you might seize there, and you might find that something's not coming out of uh, hatred, but out of fear, for instance. Fear of what other people, that might be a sinful thought in purpose, but how you address the two things is very, very different. Uh, All of them need the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I think also this is a challenge to think through, what, what am I going to do with my life? What is this for? What am I on about? And actually, the New Testament fills out what our purposes as Christians, whose followers who are forgiven for our sin, ought to be about. And calls us to keep examining our hearts to see if they line up, if our purposes really are God's purposes. I think of Romans chapter 12, for instance, that uh, do not be, uh, sorry, offer your body, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You want to be a worshiper of God, right? It's a life lived in service of God in view of his mercy. It's not to earn his mercy, it's because of his mercy, but it's his life lived for him. And so don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is, you've got to have your mind shaped. You've got to have your heart shaped. You've got to, you know, we want to be able to love God with all that heart, soul, mind and strength. Or we've got to examine our purpose and say, is, are we doing things, making decisions, even big decisions about life, retirement, about holidays, about spending our money? How does it all work? We've got to be thinking, what does God want me to be doing in this space, in this area, in my options? right and so often when we do do the deep dive which is is calling us to do uh we'll find that there's often something that's not quite right that you know is not pleasing to god in which case what's the answer it's not cover it over and pretend you can't pretend with god it's not you know just ignore it and say oh well i'm going to do it anyway and this must be god's will for my life which is what i think a lot of us are tempted to do no it's change our purposes Right, keep reflecting on Jesus, how great he is, and keep asking God, so, Lord, change this motivation, take this heart that wants to live for me away and help me to live for you. And so this is a really deep proverb, isn't it? The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. They draw them out from themselves, but they also draw them out for others. And so asking the right questions of someone else to, to find out what drives them, but also so they might understand what drives them, what's going, what's so important, what's so deep within them that makes them who they are. That's a really wise thing to do. That's what Proverbs is calling us to. Why don't we pray that God might help us have great wisdom and insight in understanding ourselves and others, but also in repurposing our lives to be glorifying to God. Father, thank you for the wisdom that you gave Solomon and that he's given us and you've given us in your Bible. We pray, please, that we'll understand that motives run very deep. Sometimes they're even beyond our own comprehension, just what's deep within. And so, Father, help us to have a heart of wisdom that seeks to draw purposes out, our own purposes, that we might understand ourselves and understand how you might see us and what might be not pleasing to you within. And we pray, please, that we'll be very good at drawing out other people's purposes for their sake and for ours that we might understand them, how to help them. And so, Father, we pray, please, that in all of us, you would be repurposing our hearts. Thank you that your love for us gives us 
a, a new heart, a new love, a new purpose in life to please you and by loving others, uh, pleasing you and pointing them to the Lord Jesus, who's the lover of their souls. And so keep remaking our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you next time for another devotion in Proverbs.